The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And we're off uh, nine and a half points on the S&P cash at 2363 today. Volume is light. Uh, we're just turning over 1.9 billion shares when normally 2.2 to 2.4 billion shares today. Of course, uh, snow in the northeast, uh, especially early in the morning. It looked like a lot of market makers were not in and uh, they ran a lot of stocks on very, very light volume. But uh, Nobody on the opposite side of the trade. Most of the stocks came back for the most part. Um, we got down to uh, 23.58, so we're what, five, six points higher. Uh, but as I said, uh, starting last week, it looked more and more like we were stuck in the doldrums. And uh, it was going to take us something big to get out of this little trading range we're in. And I don't see anything changing on that. If it does not uh, have a lot of boost uh, after the FOMC meeting tomorrow, uh, then we can probably assume that we may even go flat into next week. So uh, short of any kind of uh, big news coming out of the FOMC, which I don't think there's going to be, we could continue to be in maybe 2380 for Friday's close. Uh, options basically say that we're kind of at the top of the range, uh, but at the same time, Mm, a few too many shorts in this market uh, for the market to go down right now. It's not heavily shorted, just a lot of individual stocks, or at least a handful of individual stocks that everybody's shorting. Um, but uh, pretty much getting squeezed out on that side, too. We'll look at a few of those that are moving today. Um, but uh, in the meantime, just not a lot going on. What about uh, off about 23 on the uh on the NASDAQ, it's just not much to write home about or, you know, scream about 5853, let's call it 5853 on the NASDAQ. Um, volume, you know, again, just not that exciting. And I don't know what else you can say about it. It's just a quiet day ahead of a, f a Fed day. We had uh, probably a lot of people missing and late coming in to the open. Uh, a few games played out there, and uh, just going to be a quiet day, I think, and tomorrow into uh, the FOMC meeting, and probably not a, a lot to report until then. As always, we like to start off the show with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating on this day in 18, oh, excuse me. Should be 18. That's not right. I'm going to have to look this back up. 1871. Oh, went to the wrong one. Come on, back. Back. Ugh. Man, why is it doing that? Come on. Eighteen seventy one. is that right? Okay. There we go. That uh, PowerPoint is not being uh, great today. On this day in 1871, Albert Einstein is born, the son of a Jewish electrical engineer in Ulm, Germany. Einstein's theory of special and general uh, relativity drastically alter man's view of the universe and his work in particle and energy theory helped make possible quantum mechanics and ultimately the atomic bomb. Uh, when they looked back at him, he had three really big things that he won Nobel Prizes for. Uh, the first one was figuring out that light uh, uh, had a it came in packets, uh, in little bushels, and they called that being uh, a quantum. 
a quanta. Um, and uh, why it uh, came in packets, it actually acted more like a wave in the water. Uh, other things he figured out was a brownie in motion. Uh, this was kind of a random motion uh, in water. And through that, he proved that there were atoms long before anybody could see atoms. He showed that by heating parts of the water, you could move uh, the water faster in some spots. And of course, uh, his uh, big Mac Daddy deal, E equals MC squared. The uh, formula is actually a little longer than that. Most people uh, don't spend a lot of time on it, but uh, there's actually a momentum thing that goes over the top of it. But since uh, yeah, for most things you don't need to calculate momentum, uh, that little uh, square root thing that hangs over the top of that uh, formula uh, pretty much left out. But uh, one of the most... Uh, iconic formulas of all time, of course. Uh, as soon as he published that, everybody for about 10 years told him why he was wrong. And then everybody started to see the light and understood what it meant and the implications of it. And pretty soon people started playing with uh, atoms of both the largest size and the smallest size, trying to figure out what they could do. They figured out that uh, if you took the large atom uh, plutonium and uh, and uranium, that uh, you could do something very special with them as they decayed. And uh, wrote letters uh, encouraging President Roosevelt to develop the atomic bomb. But um, probably the most interesting thing to me about him today is that we know that we see people like Elvis and, and others that or famous people that have died that still make a lot of money through licensing. Well, not only was he with the smartest man alive, he's still he's one of the richest men dead. His uh, likeness and uh, selling uh, his uh, T-shirts and other things like that makes more money, almost double the next dead celebrity out there. And uh, they've done an excellent job of... Uh, keeping his image alive and uh, squeezing out a few shekels out of his likeness. Uh, even, uh, what did he die? 1944 or five or three, somewhere in there. Uh, maybe it was 46. I can't remember right now. Yeah, well, at least 50, 60 years later, uh, still making money hand over fist. Yeah, a lot of people make more money dead than alive. Uh, but... Uh, you know, uh, Elvis was one that went way down. He used to make a ton of money. But uh, on uh, the Mount Rushmore of dead folks making cash, uh, it is Albert Einstein. Anyway, um, not a lot of news going on. Uh, just uh, a lot of fake news about how bad the weather was supposed to be in the ne Northeast. I want my money back. Uh, this is worse than that uh, the day after day after tomorrow movie. Uh, uh these painful disaster movies on global warming. Ugh. Anyway, um, I want my money back from the uh, people yelling and screaming on the TV last night that it was Armageddon all over again. Ugh. Why is it always like that? We'll be back after the short timeout. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 we're gonna go right to uh, marie from uh pennsylvania how you doing today oh i'm doing fine we got about a half a foot of snow but i'm fine well it's not the end of the world no, it's I, th March I was expecting, 10th. I was promised the end of the world last night oh. on TV, and so I'm 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 waiting to collect. Okay. It was going to be a, a blizzard of biblical proportions. Wow. I'm, I'm very, not quite. Not, not quite. quite. Okay. Well, yeah. don't let uh, don't ever say the news didn't uh, kind of maybe uh, embellish on the truth a bit. I think they did, but that's okay. And, but the thing is, we sent half our snow plows to Eastern PA to take care of them, and I think we got more snow than them. <laughs> there was, uh, I told everybody I lived in Cincinnati for a long time. If you've ever gone through Cincinnati, I actually was on the, on the uh, Kentucky side of Cincinnati. But you go up this, I mean, real, real, real long uh, hill. It's maybe five, six, seven miles from the river uh, all the way back up into Florence, Kentucky. And it was about this time of year. It was like late February or first of March. And it had been a bad winter already. They decided that they weren't going to salt the roads. Oh, and no. They and they iced over. Uh -oh. and for And for 10 days, uh, about 4,000 semis sat in the parking lot of this giant mall waiting for the ice to melt. No one could go out on the roads or the interstates or anything. They ended up spending almost 10 days there. And I remember that. I had to walk. I was the only person that was within walking distance of the office, and I kept the company going by walking through the snow <laughs> <laughs> uh, up and back for 10 days. Thank God I had a lot of food in the house. Oh my! Anyway, goodness. let's take a look at what you want to look at. Yeah, did I don't know if I if you commented on Intel's uh, acquisition of Mobileye. I did a little yesterday. I didn't really expand on it. Um, Mobileye, of course, the Israeli-based company that's working in self-driving cars and and vision beyond that. Um, and I just had an offhand con uh, uh, comment on it yesterday, which is, you never really know what they're working on um, inside. Of Mobileye, so maybe there's something that they haven't told us. 
And the same thing with Intel. Intel, of course, bought Altera last year, and that was an easy one to figure out. They're going to put uh, Intel's technology on their chip, and that's going to be, you know, I already know what they're going to do with it. It's absolutely brilliant. On this one, it's a little tougher to figure out. One, self-driving car is not coming for a while. Is there other, some other technology that Intel wanted? Did Mobileye really need Intel's ability to make chips to make this thing happen, which is a, a big likelihood, too? I thought that they vastly overpaid. But again, we don't know what's hiding behind door number three. Yeah. So that's that's it. Now, in the scheme of things, can they absorb this if it's a total loss? They can. In the coming year, they have two or three, Intel I'm talking about, has two or three products that will kind of make this thing um, probably a moot point for at least a couple of years. So would I rather them not, with what I know, not do it? The answer is yes. That they, I think they overpay with what they've told us. Yes. Is it possible that we don't know the extent of some of the stuff going on behind door number three is also a yes. So it, this is one of the tougher ones. Normally with Altera, I knew the company I designed with their chips. I knew exactly what they did. I knew why they wanted them. This one's kind of tougher. Did they want to buy this stuff just for self-driving cars because they really think it's going to be a big deal and think that they're behind the, the uh, eight ball on this one already? Yeah, they really didn't voice why they thought that they needed to spend, what was it, $16 billion? Yeah. But uh, I guess the, the, there would be hmm. two questions that I, I think you're looking the answer for. But I think the question you're asking for, is this a reason to sell Intel? Well, or the other thing, it, it's kind of reversed today. And does that mean maybe this deal is better than what I'm thinking it is? No. I think the deal is going to take at least a couple of years to reach any kind of fruition. We haven't really seen much out of the Altera um, acquisition. It's been a year. Yeah. It takes at least a couple of years to put all the stuff together. My, my belief is that they wanted it to take, at least my hallucination, is they wanted to take mobilized software and turn it into hardware that Intel can sell. Yeah. And that's going to take a little while. So this is not something that's going to happen. Like I said, to me, I think this is going to be forgotten, kind of like the Altera thing, right. until they kick out. I, we they, they just went to sampling on the new chips with the uh, um, Altera part in the chip. But again, most people have Intel all wrong. They think, well, a lot of PCs aren't selling. Well, why they're not selling, servers are. And, you know, they'll sell a server chip, uh, and one of the cheaper server chips is like selling 10 or 15 PCs. So even on a bad day, selling a server is much preferable to selling a bunch of PCs that sell for three or 500 bucks. Yeah. So that, that's one part. But they've got a few new chips also for things like machine learning. Um, those things are, I, they saw, I just saw a new one last week. Nine grand for an individual server chip. Wow. Nine thousand wow. dollars. And people are buying it um, wow. for machine learning. When you need all the horsepower you can get, apparently it's not a big deal. So they've got that. They've, the second part Intel has, of course, is going to be uh, uh, you know, the Altera part put in the chip. Uh, the, you know, it's supposed to have been out already, but my guess is it's going to be mid-summer because they need some new motherboards, but it's the new memory technology they have. And normally, you know, things get 5% better or 10% better or, you know, a little bit better. Uh, but when you get 10 or 100 times better, that's a big deal. And the new memory technology is a monster deal for Intel. They will... They will, along with Micron, be able to own that business. So I, if I was some kind of long-term holder, I'm not talking about trading it. Right. I, don't see anything, I don't see anything out here that says that this is a problem, child. Uh, even if uh, 
the the whole uh, mobile eye thing just goes to pot, they're going to make so much money, I think, on the other things that it won't matter. Well, they hadn't done very well when the market was going up um, recently, beginning of March. No, they hadn't, and that was mostly because um, they a lot of people had and continue to see that PC sales are some part of it. So they're kind of priced on that. But I think eventually everybody's just going to figure out that what really counts are processor sales. This new memory stuff is going to be incredibly high margin stuff for them. And when they come out with the Altera products, those are going to be high margin. This is a company much like Apple. In fact, there's not, uh, can you hang on through the break? Sure, can. Okay. There's not many companies like Intel. And Intel is as close to Apple in one key uh, fundamental property. And we'll talk about that when we come back. But it is one of the only two companies that has been able to do this for a number of years. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, are you still there? Yes, Marie? I am. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's only two companies I know of that have had huge margins and been able to keep them uh, for more than a couple of years. Apple is one, and that really came with the iPhone. Uh, they've got anywhere from 60 to 70% margins on their hardware. 
Intel's the other one. They almost every year come in at 59 to 65 to 70, depending on how the year goes. My guess is with a heavy infinite emphasis on the server chips, that they're probably going to be closer in the high 60s this coming year. Um, so th they are one of these companies where if you go from 68% margins to 65% margins, the market gets nutty about it, wants to sell it, because there's a lot of shares in this. So probably the most interesting thing at uh, earnings cycles for Intel is always what everybody thinks is going to be not so much the sales, but the margin, because if that ever goes, then this is a $5 stock. But as long as they can keep those kind of margins, it's just like Apple. It's going to be pretty, pretty high. Um, there were a couple of questions in the, in the uh, traders den uh, during the break, which I'll answer with you at the same time, which is this new memory, when is it coming out? They are sampling it right now. One of the big problems that they found out, this stuff is uh, not just uh, the new memory, is not just better, doesn't use almost no power. In fact, it can, uh, it's, it's absolutely brilliant on power. The problem with it is imagine taking the biggest jet engine from the biggest jet fighter and putting it in a VW, right? It's just going to tear the VW apart. Jet engine is probably going to be fine, but it is literally can be a thousand times faster than what we have now for hard drives and memory. And there just isn't anything that can handle it. So there are uh, many of the companies are uh, right now uh, sampling those drives, the memory sticks, and new motherboards that can actually handle the speed of the new memory, both from hard drives and for uh, actual memory chips. I've seen actual uh, seen the board and seen the memory chip uh, here in Tampa a couple weeks ago, uh, and a, a short demonstration of it, and it's nothing more than jaw dropping. Um, my machine boots in about eight seconds. Um, they had one on there, and it was actually booting in half a second. Oh, wow. I like that. Oh, <laughs> it, for, Windows, for Windows 10. So yeah. I don't know, I don't know uh, exactly. Sometimes they pull tricks and stuff, but literally the, the memory will last a million years. Uh, it won't burn out. It's a thousand times faster. It uses a hundred times less power. All this stuff is coming uh, between Intel and Micron, and the problem is that you have to make sure everything else works with it. It's like getting a, a giant engine and putting it in your car. Suddenly, you need to have a better transmission. Then you need to have a better rear end. Then you got to have tires that actually stick to the ground so you just don't burn them up. Um, once you change one thing, you got to change everything, uh, just like a hot rod, and that's kind of what Intel has been going through. They had this stuff available last fall. It just made all the machines lock up. Mm. So it's it's something that is such a big change. Uh, nothing happened. One of my uh, stories, war stories from developing stuff in the 90s was we made a uh, digital disk recorder before anybody else had them that would run off a single disk. And no one had anything that would actually take data off a disk as fast as our product. And we were melting down hard drives. Uh, we weren't. Our customers were. Mm. And IBM kept flying in. We'd send them our boards. And they were doing everything in the world to figure out how to make a drive that could actually feed our product all the data it wanted without overheating. And the chips would literally melt off in computers while our customers were using them off the hard drives. Wow. And it and that's kind of it. Kind of throws me back to those days where you change something drastically enough, and a lot of other things start to break at the same time. So I think Intel's going to have a good year. They're going to be able to sell new motherboards, new chips, everything new around this new memory, uh, plus the Altera stuff, uh, and maybe down the road, maybe the Mobileye stuff. But that's a. I don't think anybody's expecting the Mobileye stuff to be anything. Uh, big in the next few years, but it's uh, it's another thing. If you don't, uh, what's the old saying? If you don't send out a ship, your ship's not going to come in. So, again, 
the problem with mobile eye is that you just don't know that much about what's going on inside of it because almost everything they uh, they do is kind of uh, proprietary. Right. So you don't see a lot. You know, hot company, a lot of those is, Israeli companies sell at a discount. So that's why I'm so kind of kind of worried about them paying $16 billion. I always right. think I always think of uh, when I see somebody doing something like that, it reminds me of Microsoft buying Skype for $8 billion. <laughs> Do you think this will drive the price of Intel down to that 33 level that we saw in November, December? I think it's more about the uh, about the general market, probably not so much about Intel itself. Okay. So if the market goes down, you get your 33 bucks. If the market doesn't go down, you you might look at today as being it. You know, you had the high volume day yesterday. Right. Um, do you own this now? Yeah, I've been in it, and I was saying to myself, either I sh I should have been selling, or maybe I should be buying, and I I couldn't figure. Well, you had a nice reversal up here that told you that if you're trading it, it was time to sell. Right. That was that spike on January 27th with 44 million shares compared right. to the October 10th high uh, at 75 million shares. So you had your signal out here. Right. Does that mean this thing is uh, horribly overpriced or anything else? How long have you owned it? Oh, for a few years. Yeah. I probably wouldn't be selling it. I'm thinking the back half of this year. Once the Altera stuff comes out, we've talked about it before. I don't know if you've listened to the show, but I was saying that uh, maybe AMD and uh, NVIDIA were kind of a little overpriced now. Were you listening to me that day? No, I try to catch your show, but I don't get it every day. That's fine. I'm, that's that's fine. We we won't we won't whip you with a wet noodle. <laughs> the the thing that I was talking about was that. With everybody, uh, the buzzword in, in Silicon Valley now is machine learning. Right. And the only thing you could really do to speed up computers with machine learning was buy video cards, which weren't really designed to do it, but could work very well at speeding up machine language, but not designed to do it. Intel is working very hard, and that was the uh, Altera part. And why they bought Altera is they wanted to work very hard at being able to do a lot of things that were done in video cards much, much better for machine learning. And that's kind of what you're looking at for Altera. And same thing with AMD. Both those video card guys were selling a lot of very expensive video cards for, for machine learning. I think when Intel kind of hits them, both of those companies are very susceptible, and that should do uh, well for Intel in the future, probably the back half of this year. Anyway, thanks for the call, Marie. We'll be Thank back you. after the short timeout. TFNN has just launched a special event in Tampa with Tom O'Brien taking place March 18th, sponsored by Nadex. Tom O'Brien will be presenting two workshops for a combined two and a half hours of education, bisecting and dissecting his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. March 18th kicks off with a continental breakfast as we get everyone checked in, and that is followed by two 75-minute workshops with Tom O'Brien. The first workshop from 8.45 until 10 a.m. will cover quality volume, cause and effect, and ABC structures, and the second workshop from 10.15 until 11.30 a.m. will cover swing points, testing, and the Tiger Gartley. Tom will then wrap things up with a question and answer session, which will be followed by a Tiger luncheon social on the rooftop of the Westin Hotel. The best part is that it's all free, but you must register to attend. Visit the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and to sign up today, and we hope to see you in Tampa on March 18th. If you'll look to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market safe core commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance, there's no annual percentage 
yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, you know, we spent kind of the time on that. We'll look at some other things out here today. Oh, wanted to look at TLT. Um, since last fall, we said this is probably the most important um, chart in the markets. Um, and, you know, it made a very good signal that uh, it was headed lower. Um, I didn't think it was going to go and blow this away as fast as it did. It certainly did. Uh, but I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, it's made a TLT's made a bottom. I think it has two. The energy off this last high, January 12th, wasn't as strong, just a little lighter than the December 16th up to that January 12th, 123 high. Since you had so much damage uh, in this out here, I rarely see st uh, stocks or anything else come down, have such huge technical damage, and then instantly make some kind of V bottom out here. Um, now, that being said, uh, you tested the previous low of December 16th. That's 16.6 6 million shares with 10.5 million shares. It's closed back in the range. Uh, it did go below the previous uh, low. It popped back in there today, but my guess is this thing's probably going to stumble along a little while, and one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to bounce on light volume and then come back down on heavier volume, or you're going to get a sign of strength, and then it's going to pull back on lighter volume, and that's probably, if you're thinking that you want to be long uh, the TLT, that would be a much better position to be on than speculating that it just does a V bottom off the bottom. Now, it, it's probably going to bounce here. So if you're sitting in front of a screen, maybe you could uh, trade something like this. But uh, to me, it, it's, it's been since last fall and now um, kind of the, the best indication of what's happening in the market and happening in interest rates. So... I don't know what I can say about it other than that. But you got a nice signal. You're on the buy side as long as it holds 116.80 uh, and above. Uh, you're above uh, and into the trading range. Uh, could it bounce uh, as high as 119, maybe 119.50 or something? It, that's what I would kind of imagine. And if it did so on a lot of juice, everybody piles in, then comes back one more time on light volume, then I think that's where that thing might actually bottom. Uh, da, 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 what else do we have out here? Got a couple of emails. Um, got kind of a similar question on Microsoft. Uh, if I wanted to look out here on what's happening on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, uh, kind of like the rest of the uh, industry out there, including Facebook and many of the others in virtual reality, um, it seems like virtual reality will be 
a little bit more virtual than reality for years to come. That was one of the bigger things that we're pushing. That's down on light volume today. They've got two updates coming out this year for Windows 10 that should help. Uh, they have a lot of new products and software engineering products um, that are coming out that I use. In fact, I just installed the brand new version uh, for writing software for Windows on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and it works very well. So not a lot of bugs or anything like that, at least so far. I tried uh, recompiling all the code I write for my own software, including the, uh, the art of timing and trade charts. Everything worked without any changes. So looks really good, but they've added a lot of new features, added in a lot of new languages. Um, they're not so stuck on you actually using Windows anymore. Uh, they want to make sure that they provide the tools for you to use whatever operating system you want to, including um, uh, Linux or uh, Ubuntu or any of the other variants of Unix. Um, one of the things they do have is the language I write in, uh, for the most part, can be transferred directly over to those machines. So I'm not exactly sure how much work I'd have to do to make it run on Linux. But... Um, for the most part, a lot of the stuff that I've written uh, would uh, conceivably all run on those machines too now, uh, just by putting it on those machines and compiling it for those machines. So uh, pretty good stuff, but not a lot of new stuff coming out. One of the things that may hurt Microsoft in the near future, it looks like we've seen some testing that they're dropping the price for Windows Office. Uh, for 99 bucks, you can put it up onto five PC. Uh, for 69 bucks, you could have it on one PC. Uh, there is some um, leaks that have come out of Microsoft that some people have already seen in the uh, online community that will look like they're going to drop that one machine to 39 bucks a year, which is still kind of good. But again, a little bit of resistance uh, probably for having a lot of home machines with office on them anymore that's one of their giant cash cows uh, as i said they released a lot of new products one of those was a, a new server a new database server with a lot of um, support for things like machine learning uh, applications and cloud services um, again microsoft's always been great for companies that have you know, 50,000 employees, 10,000 employees. There's a, a kind of a shift when you go to the internet where you have, a, you know, uh, 500 million users or a billion users like Facebook, and you have 10,000 users inside a company. Microsoft is focused a lot more on inside the company kind of applications. So if you need to have a few programmers generate a program fairly quickly, it's not a big deal to pay a little bit more for the tools you use to do it, uh, to do it quickly and not have to hire a whole bunch of people. If you're Facebook, you hire a thousand people and you do it so that it runs on machines as cheaply as possible. And that means uh, you probably don't buy a lot of tools. You just buy a lot of uh, manpower to actually make it and then run it on Linux and a bunch of other things that for the most part are free or open source. Um, so anyway, Microsoft still doing good. By now, we were looking to see whether they would have some of the HoloLens stuff out on it. It just, uh, just, I guess we're probably a couple of years too soon for all this stuff from uh, Google Glasses to uh, a lot of other stuff that we've seen out there. The uh, virtual reality stuff, the Oculus stuff from Facebook, all that stuff just maybe a couple of years, maybe a generation or two ahead of what a lot of other people um, are doing and what maybe the silicon from Intel. Uh, I know uh, Microsoft's working very hard with Intel to make chips that run faster and cooler uh, for those glasses and the head, uh, and the head stuff. Uh, people are kind of starting and talking about uh, the, them getting kind of hot. I guess it's the equivalent of holding your cell phone up to the side of your ear for an hour. You just uh, have to worry about it. Oh, we've got Mike in Toronto. Let's go to Mike. How you doing? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Uh, we want to look at CNI, Canadian National Railways. 
Yep. On the daily versus the weekly. Well, I really don't do uh, do that, but we will uh, come back after the break and we'll talk about railroads specifically. If you can hang on. Yeah, okay. Okay. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back to uh, Mike in Toronto. So what, what are you thinking on, on uh, Canadian Railway here? Well, in the previous episode uh, with you, you talked about testing seventy-three dollars. Yep. Uh, and uh, I, la I laughed at that after I hung up on you, and and I was shocked yesterday. The high was seventy-three oh four. Yep. Uh, pretty much and in I there. I got a nasty drawdown here. I'm just thinking, <sighs> will I ever see it south of seventy in, in my lifetime? Um, I think you. Yeah, I think you could. Um, it's yeah. down. The volume's not picking up all that much. You basically tied the previous high with the same amount of volume, so there's no big uh -huh. sign in here. But to me, was was kind of hone in on this. Um, from the February 6th low to the uh -huh. February 23rd high, if we compare that run with the February 28th low to yesterday's high, 
since I used my power law vector indicator on it, the energy is actually up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit more energy on here. Is it monstrous? No. But it would have kept me away from trying to reshort the high if I hadn't been short already. Um, mm -hmm. Could it come back? I mean, if the whole market... Uh Hello? Right now, this is the situation. Uh, the Montreal Board of Directors on Friday, uh, it was very cruel as a short seller. They announced that at four o'clock after the market closed um, that they're going to extend the buyback to buyback policy till uh, April the seventh. Yeah. So all these low volume daily bars could this just be um, the market maker or uh, basically buying back stock? Yeah, I don't know. Um, to me, I just don't understand. Right now, shorting the railroads. Is there something that I'm missing fundamentally out here? It's fully uh, I don't valued. see that. I don't see anything in the chart, but I'm I'm mm -hmm. thinking in the railroads themselves. To me, it just seems like everything that everybody's yelling about is going to take railroads to drag it around, steel pipeline, oil, mm -hmm. crude, everything. It, I don't, you know, if the whole market pulls back, if the economy fails. I yeah. could see a lot more in being short the railways or railroad. I could have seen it when crude was 160 bucks, and figured, you know, if that was the high in crude, you'd probably go after it. I'm just kind of yeah. missing the fundamental reason why it would short a railway or railroad here right now. Okay, so if we go south over the next four to six weeks in the general market, where do you where do you see the downside target on this stock? 68.50. 68.50. That's it. Yeah, maybe 68.25. How about even the 200-day moving average, something like that? I don't use it, but, you know, to mm -hmm. me, to me, this thing gapped up back on the 4th of January, mm -hmm. and this thing is in a bigger trading range from right here. You you uh, came down on January 19th with uh, two and a half million shares. You retested that on February. Six with this 1.27 million shares. So you came in with half the volume, which would have scared me to death to be short it until I saw some kind of top with half the volume. Uh -huh. So to me, is it going to the moon? Probably not. Is it a bigger trading range? Mm, probably 50%. If you're going to just hang on to it, is there a chance it hits uh, 60, 850? It could. Uh -huh. I just don't see, to me, I'd look at this and go, okay, I just don't see a great deal out here that tells me that this thing's weak or that it's going to fail. So it's just going to bounce around a bit, and hopefully it bounces your way. Okay. I don't, I don't think you're going to end up in the drink or it's going to break out here. It's it. Anyway, thanks for the phone calls today. Made the, my day go fast. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to, and we will see you tomorrow. Same bat channel same bad time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.